Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the last in a series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi Emulation Lab videos. This lab is Lab 5.1.3.9 UPnP Vulnerabilities. For this lab we'll be making use of our familiar topology with our Kali Linux virtual machine connecting through a VirtualBox host only network adapter into the Windows network bridge which takes the part of a real physical switch. Um, I'm going to make use of node 3 so we'll be connecting through tap adapter VME3. Um, we're also going to create a virtual Ethernet adapter on node 3 which will simulate the wireless network card on the Raspberry Pi. I've already started Kali Linux and it's fully loaded. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up the terminal window. I'll maximize that. I'll do a quick IPA to check the IP addresses 203.0.113.1. That's fine. We'll do an SS minus TL UN to check for listening sockets. There are none, so there's no servers running on this at the moment. This is slightly different. We're not going to switch on the DHCP server. So you must make sure you do not activate the DHCP server. Now we know we don't have the DHCP server running because we didn't actually have any uh, listening sockets open on the system. But it would be a good idea just to double check. So we'll do a services ISC DHCP server status and we can see that indeed it is not running. It's also important to check to make sure that the Oracle VirtualBox host network manager has the DHCP server disabled. Uh, we don't want any DHCP servers running, not on the Kali box or on the Oracle VirtualBox host network manager. The reason for this is the Raspberry Pi itself, node 3 in this case, is actually going to be running as a DHCP server in addition to a DNS server, a Linux internet gateway device and numerous other things. OK, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start up Node 3. I'm just going to navigate to my downloads folder, Node 3, and run startup.bat. We can see that uh, the uh, Windows batch file has now run that very long command in order to start up Node 3. Connecting through Windows Tap Adapter VME 3. If I bring up the Kumu window, we can see that Node 3 is indeed loading. OK, I'll minimize the DOS window. I'll also minimize the file system window and I'll minimize the Oracle VirtualBox. That's it. I just wanted to get back basically to the Kali Linux machine. While the Raspberry Pi is booting up, I'll do a Control L to clear the screen. And we shouldn't be too far away with the Raspberry Pi now. Okay, now this is a considerably more complex lab uh, than most. And it did require a little bit of hacking in order to get it working, specifically with the Wi-Fi.sh and the cleanup Wi-Fi.sh shells, uh, uh, shell scripts which are supplied by uh, Cisco. Um, I've had to actually hack them around a little bit in order to uh, get them to work with their emulated network environment. And of course we will be making use of the virtual Ethernet cards as well. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi is now booted up. You can see because it didn't connect to a DHCP server, we've now got a Microsoft A PIPA address, 169254 something something. I'm now going to log into the Raspberry Pi with the username of Pi and the password of Raspberry. Now this UPnP lab, it can be made to work really, really well, but you do have to uh, be very careful to follow uh, what I've done in order to make it work with a Raspberry Pi emulated environment. 
So we're now on Pi as the Pi user Kumu RPI3. Um, I'm actually going to type sudo su to permanently switch to the root user. And while I'm in here, I'm going to change directories to. Uh, let's see, we're already in home, so we want to go to notebooks, course materials. I'm just using the tab to finish the rest of the uh, file structure line. For IoT security script, uh, security, and then scripts. There we go. So as per the Cisco lab. Okay. Now we've got an extremely long command prompt. So what we'll do is, exactly in the Cisco lab, we'll type the word prompt underscore dir trim equals one which is a really nice way of actually trimming the length of the prompt uh, so it doesn't show a directory within directory within directory almost ad infinitum filling the entire screen up uh, we've now got a lot more screen space after the prompt OK, uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do an ls-l. And in here you can see all of the standard Cisco scripts. Uh, you'll also see one called waifu.py.sh and another one called cleanup.py.sh. Needless to say, these are my somewhat uh, heavily hacked about with scripts in order to make this work properly. Um, if we do a quick nano of Waifu, waifu pi.sh. Um, you can see a lot of this script in its original format, wifi.sh, there's an awful lot of things that are actually commented out. What I've done is I've removed most of those, um, not all of them, of course. I've left the copyright up there, understandably so, because it's a lovely script. I've just had to modify it very slightly in order to work for what we want to do. Um, you can see that I've added the lines to create the virtual Ethernet cards, so they're already in this script. I have a little look at the foundation video for virtual Ethernet cards, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you can see that I've now called the outside uh, Ethernet card VETH1 instead of WLAN1. Um, other than that, and removing a lot of the commented outlines, just to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on, the script is, is pretty much the same as the original. OK. Um, the rebooting I've commented out as well um, and I've removed a few little lines which stopped it working but what we'll do is we can actually supply you with this script and likewise the cleanup Wi-Fi script there was actually less to modify on this one so I'll look at cleanup waifu pi.sh and in here, all I've really done is I've actually, I, I originally um, changed these lines uh, so as the permission setting was on the waifu and the cleanup waifu. And then I realized well, there's not really any point in changing the permissions on these uh, files because the other script doesn't create the permissions, so you'd have to go in and manually reset them. So I've just left them as they are and uh, commented the lines out. OK, so while we're here, um, what we can do is we can actually do a uh, system CTL status. And we can check, uh, for instance, DNS mask, which is the DNS server and DHCP server. And we can see it's not running. That will be activated by the way foo pi.script. We can also check, for instance, uh, the Linux Internet Device Gateway script. And you can see, uh, get it the right way around, Internet Gateway Device script. And you can see that's not running either. OK. We can also do an SS minus TLUN to see what uh, sockets are open. And we've only got a few of the normal sockets open on the system at the moment. We've got UDP port 68, which is the DHCP client daemon. 
so as it can get IP addresses using DHCP. So that's the client side. 67 is the server side. Um, we've got port 80 web server, port 22 SSH server. So there's not an awful lot happening there. Now what we will do is we will run waifu pi.sh. Now of course in order to run waifu pi.sh um, you may well need to go in and uh, if it's not set up as the owner root you may have to change the owner to root so that's just a ch own space root colon root space and then the name of the script that will change the owner to uh, root and you may have to change the permissions to execute which of course is just a ch mod space plus lowercase x space and the name of the script and we've done these things before and they're very easy to do. Okay, so you need to make sure the script set is executable and owned by root. Once you've done that, you should be able to run it. You can see what it's doing. It's creating backup copies of the config files. It's creating various sim links for the Wi-Fi Pi service. It, the next line down, net IPv4 IP underscore forward equals one is an interesting line. What that does is it actually turns your Pi into a router. So it will now forward packets between interfaces on the Raspberry Pi. For instance, anything coming in on the wired interface, Ethernet 0, uh, could be forwarded across to the wireless interface, WLAN 0, or in air case, the virtual Ethernet interface, VETH1, which is taking the place of WLAN 0, because of course your emulated Raspberry Pi has no wireless hardware on it, so we've had to create a virtual Ethernet card in order to do the job. Okay, that's now finished running the script. I'm going to hit Control L, and we'll just have a little look and see what it's actually done. So let's have a little look at the uh, sockets again. Ah, now there's more sockets open. Definitely. Uh, we've got uh, 53, which is DNS, of course. 68 was the client daemon for DHCP. We won't worry about that one. Um, we've got uh, a few on here, which I won't actually mention what they are, some of these, because it's, it's part of the lab, and you should go and find out what these, uh, what these ports are actually doing. OK, so yeah, it's looking good. Looking good. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to manually reboot the device now. So I'm going to do a quick sync, just to make sure everything that's in RAM is uh, synchronized back to the hard drive. Um, you shouldn't really need to do that, but just to play it safe. I'm then going to power off. So we'll shut the Pi down, and then we'll start the Pi back up again. And um, what I'd like to do is I'd like you to see the Pi as it boots back up again. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause the screen. Okay, the Pi has now um, shut down. You always get that little kernel panic right at the end, but it's already reached the uh, target power off, so it has actually shut down by this point. I'm going to hit Control-G. So the kernel panic actually doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Uh, so uh, Control-Alt-G, I should say. There we go. And shut down that Pi, and then we'll just open it again. I'm only doing this just to play it safe to make sure that all of the services start up properly at boot time. OK, so there's their Pi. There's their Kali Linux machine. I'll do a quick IPA on the Kali Linux machine. You can see that it has its standard IP address of 203.0.113.1. If I do an IPR, I can see it's only got a static route to that directly connected network. There is no default gateway. And the interesting thing is, here's our emulated Raspberry Pi starting up. This will run, among other things, a DHCP server and a DNS server. And that's courtesy of DNS Mask. And what that will do, among other things, the DHCP server will actually hand off to the Kali Linux machine an IP address and a default gateway. So, uh, whereas in the lab they actually get you to manually create a default gateway, you can actually get away without doing that because, there we go, uh, let's have a little look. Can we see DNS mask, a lightweight DHCP and caching DNS server is just starting up. Um, we can see the Wi-Fi Pi service is starting up. 
we can see that the UPnP Internet Gateway Device Service is starting up and we're good to go. Now, uh, we currently have an IP address of 169.254. Uh, this is because it uh, initially looked at the network interfaces file and decided to see if it could get an IP address for our DHCP server. However, part of the Wi-Fi script, uh, the wi Waifu Pi script, it should actually obtain a static IP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as Pi with a password of Raspberry. Okay, I'll do a sudo su to become the root user permanently, which is not something you'd really want to do in, in a production environment, but for a lab it just makes life easy really. Um, what I'll do, I'll also do that uh, prompt command as well because that's just such a useful command. So we'll do a prompt underscore dir trim equals zero. Uh, sorry, equals one. Okay, now it doesn't look like it made much difference there, but obviously, as we work our way in further and further into the file system, it will. Um, and uh, then I'll do an IPA. Linux commands are always lowercase, so I just need to knock the cat box off. IPA. There we go. And how about that? Right, though it didn't have an IP address initially on boot up, um, as the Wi Fi Waifu Pi script loaded, it's now got an IP address of 203.0.113.254 um, on Ethernet 0. And um, that's the highest IP address on the subnet, of course, which is a good IP address to use for the default gateway. Because this is now a router. This device is now actually functioning as a router and a DNS server and a DHCP server. Amazing what you can do with a Raspberry Pi. Um, if we do a system ctl status for DNS mask because the DNS mask is running this is good okay so that uh, all looks uh, pretty reasonable there um, clear the screen and we'll do that again for Linux Internet Gateway device, and uh, we can see that that is also running. Okay, um, UPnP v1 Ethernet zero. Okay, however, currently we don't have v1 uh, because those virtual Ethernet cards are um, only temporary. So on the reboot, we lost the virtual Ethernet card. Um, don't run the script again. Uh, just add the virtual Ethernet card manually. Okay, foundation video number one of course told us how to do this. Um, so that's IP link add vth0 type vth peer name vth1 because they're always created in pairs and then what we need to do is we need to bring down vth0 so we only have vth1 up so that'll be IP link set. Oh, hello, what happened there? Just uh, come out of that for a second. There was a little console debugging message just popped up there right in the middle of my typing. So it's not just Cisco routers that do that sort of thing. So IP link set v0 down. Okay, and finally we'll put an IP address on v1. So we can do that with. Uh, I've got another console debugging message popped up. <laughs> so it must be the case of whenever you turn a Raspberry Pi into a router, it acts uh, a bit like a Cisco router and you get no end of console debugging messages popping up. But um, here we go. IP add. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it the address of 192.168. Think of a number, 40 network dot one. Slash 24. Um, on device 
what did we say we wanted it on? We wanted it on v1, didn't we? Because we brought v0 down. in there. Ah. IP address add. There we go. Okay, so if I do an IF config now, the old command is actually quite neat and tidy to look at this. We can see that we've got v1 up with an IP address of 192.168.40.1. So that's now emulating or uh, it's taking the place of our WLAN adapter. WLAN zero. Okay, well, we have a Linux router running, which is also functioning as a DHCP server, a DNS server, um, a uh, internet gateway device for UPnP. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll go over to the Kali Linux machine and we'll just clear the screen and we'll do a DH client minus V for verbose, so as we can see what's going on on Ethernet zero. Um, and this basically is going to go on and uh, say go and get myself an IP address using DHCP on Ethernet zero. Bang! That was quick. Okay, so now if we do an IP address again uh, we can see that we actually have the IP address of 203.0.113.192 in addition to the original one which was set statically. Now to be fair we could probably do with um, getting rid of that original one. So we can do an IP address delete IPA Dell. Uh, we'll just copy the IP address. The amount of Linux you're learning doing this on device Ethernet 0. Okay, now when we run the command, the whole lot's gone. <laughs> Yes, this is where you have to be careful. If you take an IP address off the interface like that, it will take all the IP addresses off. However, that's no big deal. All we need to do again is run DH client. Bang. Okay. Now we should have a nice IP address that's come straight across from our newly created Linux router on node 3. Not only that, but if we do an IPR, we can see that we've got a default gateway. Okay, so in the course material, you actually have to manually add that. Well, being as the router's running as a router with a DHCP server on it, it makes just as much sense to, um, to use DH client to ask for IP address and information from the router, and it'll add it itself. Okay, so that's good. Um, so we should be able to ping um, 20. 3.0.113.254 which is our Linux router, that's our default gateway. Excellent. Okay, um, what I'm doing, I'm going to do a control L and what do we need to do next? What we need to do next is bring our node 3 back up again and on node 3 uh, let's have a little look what we've got. We've got uh, 192.168.40.1, which is on a V1, that's a wireless card, it's taking the place of our wireless card. Um, if we just have a look at ETH0, uh, we've got uh, 203.0.113.254, so that's on our wired side. Um, our wired side is effectively going out to the internet, our wireless side, V1, is going off to our local LAN, uh, so that all looks good. clear the screen. Um, I think we've already done this once but we'll just double do it again just as a double check. Let's make sure that we've got the internet gateway device up and running. Internet device gateway. Ah. Oh, there we go. I knew I'd get there eventually. Has been a long day. Okay, so system 
CTL status Linux hyphen IGD and we can see the Linux uh, Internet Gateway is indeed up and running UPnP is running um, so with that working let's see if we can check the firewall out so don't forget to look at the firewall foundational video make sure you've got IP tables set up correctly for the legacy IP tables hey look at that now our uh, default input forward and output uh, policies have been set to accept um, we uh, we probably could have set those to deny actually thinking about it but um, that would have made it a more effective firewall uh, but what it has done is it's appended on the bottom there it's appended um, for um, established and related connections um, a couple of extra rules okay now they were put on by the waifu pi script however check it out in a moment um, have a little look and see what happens when we use the Kali Linux machine against this Raspberry Pi okay so uh, as per the instructions in the course materials uh, what we can do is we can uh, let's do control J just to release the mouse for a second and what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize the uh, there we go minimize the Kumu window what we can now do is we can use the command IPA to check our IP address so we're using dot uh, 192 and then we can do a U PNC hyphen A with the IP address of our Kali machine you can highlight that in the terminal window and then use your middle button on your mouse if you've got a wheel mouse and the wheel just pushes down slightly it should paste it in um, port 22 we'll map that out to 1337 just like in the course material on TCP and let's see what we've got hey that looks pretty good doesn't it eh? UPnP devices found on the network it's found 113254 a router on 49152 uh, local LAN address is our address external IP address look at that it's found the IP address on the other side of the router um, our, uh, local IP port port 22 for SSH there mapping across to 1337 so we've done that the redirect how neat is that let's check IP tables out notice we've got one two three four five rules there are three defaults and two additionals let's run that command again and now there are six so it's automatically added a rule to the firewall for the destination port 22 SSH whoa scary stuff okay let's finish off a little look at that lab now with uh, running the Miranda command that'll drop us into the UPnP prompt in the UPnP prompt we'll do an M search so as you can see all things are indeed possible with our emulated Raspberry Pi environment and we can see that we've got a SSDP message coming back from the gateway dot two five four superb um, what we can also do is we can do a host list okay so we'll do a control C and we'll run host list and we can see the host at two oh three zero one one three two five four and after doing the host list 
we can do a host get for zero. Okay, and that's good. That's uh, done its job correctly, and we can follow that with a host summary for the same device. Now in here you can actually use the tab key, so I'm just going to hit SUM, hit the tab key, zero, and there we go. All that useful information. Okay. That's good, the lab just works. It, uh, it does take a little bit of fiddling and what we will do is we will supply you with the waifu pi.sh and the clean up wifi poo.sh scripts. Um, talking of which, uh, let's do the clean up now. So uh, what we'll do first of all is um, on the Kali Linux machine we'll do a uh, IP root del default um, via uh, where are we going via? We're going via 203.0.113.254 okay so now when we do an IPR yep the default route is now gone that's good and then we'll switch over to the Pi and in the Pi what do we want to do? Uh, we simply want to run dot forward slash Uh, hold on, what directory am I in? Root, okay, so we need to cd to the scripts directory, so home uh, pi notebooks course materials number 4 for IoT security scripts okay, dir trim's done its job kept the command prompt nice and clean and then we can just run clean up waifu pi.sh superb okay slightly longer uh, lab there but that was a considerably more complex lab um, but it does go to show uh, that uh, with sufficient finesse we can do pretty much anything we like with their emulated Raspberry Pi environment. Okay, so that uh, script is now running, and what that script should do is when it gets to the end of the script, once it's shut down all of the services, um, it should reboot the Pi, and then the Pi is ready to go um, in its nice clean state for whatever else you wish to do to the system. Okay, superb. Um, right, we'll call that a day for that lab, and uh, that was indeed the last lab of the IoT security. The last lab that we can do. There, the only labs we can't do are the ones which involve either genuine wireless connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, or using the GPIO pins. Other than that, we can do pretty much anything. So thanks again for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed uh, using your emulated Raspberry Pi environment and um, learning a little bit of Linux on the way. Such a powerful operating system, and so useful to have that Linux knowledge.